Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are still working on King Richard II and today we get to hear from Sir Edmund Scroop in Act 3, Scene 2. So things that are happening, King Richard had gone off to Ireland to fight a sort of useless war that a lot of people really didn't think was worth him going. And he took all of John of Gaunt's money to go fight that war, which was actually Henry Bolingbroke's inheritance. So Henry Bolingbroke, who had been banished when he was the Duke of Hereford, but he's now the Duke of Lancaster, so he thinks he has a right to be back in England, he has come back, and a lot of Englishmen, including like Northumberland and Ross and Willoughby, have joined his side, and he also has the support of France, so he's kind of marching through England and, and disposing of people who he doesn't think need to be there anymore, like Bushy and Green. Um, and meanwhile king richard has returned he returned at the very top of this scene and was very glad to be back on english soil and he asked the english soil to please spew all of its venom at, at bolingbroke so that he could win but then he finds out from salisbury that all of the welshmen who were supposed to be there waiting for him to to be on king richard's side deserted because they thought that richard must have died in ireland because he came back so late and he got a little down about that, but then O'Merrill was like, remember who you are. And he's like, you know what? You're right. I'm the king. I'm, I'm God's chosen one. I'm the king. I can, I can beat anybody down. So then Scroop comes in and he's like, things aren't so good right now. And the king's like, what are you talking about? Things are great. Uh, whatever it is, you know, the, the fact that I, if I'm not in charge anymore, then that's just my care has gone away. And if Bolingbroke wants to do this, then he can do this. Like, it's fine. I'm the king. It's fine. It'll all be fine. And Scroop says, glad am I that your highness is so armed to bear the tidings of calamity. Like an unseasonable stormy day, which make the silver rivers drown their shores, as if the world were all dissolved to tears. So high above his limits swells the rage of Bolingbroke, covering your fearful land with hard bright steel and hearts harder than steel. White beards have armed their thin and hairless scalps against thy majesty. And boys with women's voices strive to speak big and clap their female joints in stiff unwieldy arms. Against thy crown, thy very beadsmen learn to bend their bows of double fatal you. Against thy state, yea, distaff women manage rusty bills. Against thy seat, both young and old rebel, and all goes worse than I have power to tell. So the news that Scroop brings is how many, how many um, native Englishmen and women and children are raising up arms against King Richard because they are very much on Bolingbroke's side. Bolingbroke is, is painted as this sort of wave of anger rolling through the country that, that has you know, broken the banks of the river along which these waves are flowing um, and it's infecting all of the people and all of the people, literally all of the people, are turning against Richard and Richard's like, well, no, it, it'll, it'll be fine because where's my guys? Where's Bushy and Baggett and Green? My guys, they, they'll, they'll advise me to do the right thing and everything will still be fine. And Scroop is like, mm, they kind of made their peace with Bolingbroke. He's like, how dare they make their peace? Those traitors, they'll be punished and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, no, they made their peace by dying. They've been killed by Bolingbroke. Um, so you don't really have friends left. Um, and King Richard has some thoughts on that tomorrow in an absolutely beautiful monologue that we will get to tomorrow. So tune in for that. Mwah.